This exercise could be the game changer to start your backswing and get the rotation and coil that you know you're capable of without the effort. Because if you are trying to put effort in, trying to control the backswing, and it all feels quite wooden, always a bit uncomfortable, then this exercise hopefully will hold the key for you. Because what we're gonna look at is using momentum, using ground reaction forces to create the momentum in the system, instead of trying to create a movement with lots of thought, deliberate, manipulation, very consciously trying to position the club and trying to turn the shoulders 90 degrees, turn the hips 45 and do all those things that we think we're supposed to in order to make the downswing as easy as possible. But we don't think like that in any other sport. We just throw the ball back to throw it through or swing the bat back. We don't really give rotation and positioning a second thought. So what we need to do, we need to find a way that is gonna allow us to use the body in the most natural way to swing this weight. And when you swing a weight naturally, it creates the swing. Essentially, we're just creating the energy for it. We're transferring energy. And then this thing swings around our body and creates its own geometry in terms of the golf swing. So we don't have to think about all these swing planes and positions, because if we swing this thing efficiently, all those kind of textbook positions, which are just moments in time of emotion, all kind of happen naturally. And because it's happening naturally, your body recognizes where it is and is able to control it. The same way that you can kick a ball or throw a ball or hit something. It's like the but there's an intuitive sense and you never really thought about how you initiated a kick or a throw or a hit. It just happens. But in golf, because the ball's so static, it's the final call, guys. I'm really excited for our GRF Golf School this coming week. It's on Tuesday, the 24th of October. There's a couple of places left. So if you're interested, follow the link and join me for the full day. We're gonna be going through the GRF training system, the vector map. We've got the pressure plate and the track man to analyze everything we need to optimize your swing mechanics. So if you've got a golf holiday you wanna get tuned up for, or just want to know what you need to work on over the winter months and get your game ready for next season, this will be the ideal day. So guys, I hope you can make it. If you're interested, follow the link. All the details are there, and I look forward to seeing you at the Golf Groove in London on Tuesday. The big question looms, how do we start the backswing? The backswing is really a reaction. Your golf swing is a reaction. Motion is a reaction to intention. So letting motion take effect is really down to the intention that precedes the motion. So literally, we see, we do, but we recognize the doing. If you grab a tennis ball, cut it in two, you'll end up with two half domes. This is what I've got here, two foam pressure domes. Now these are like mini trampolines. And what I want you to do is place them on the ground, about hip width, stand on them and make a little jump. Now, wherever you felt yourself push off from, that's the part of the foot you need to put the pressure dome underneath. And what I want you to feel here is I want you to feel the pelvis. I want you to recognize the front here of the pelvis, where the hips are. People think of hips as this area. And that's right, that is part of the hip but I want you to think about the anterior aspect here, where the hip flexors are, the groin there. I want you to think about the flexion and extension here, because it's this that's gonna hold the key, because it's this flexion and extension that creates the impulse, and it's that impulse that's gonna transfer this force quick. And this is gonna help you unload quickly. You're gonna see it in most swings. There's a little shift and a little spring, and what that's doing is it's creating the momentum for the rest of the action to take place. It's creating enough momentum to swing the club. Using these pressure domes, what I want you to do is just feel a little jump, a little drop, a little pop. Once we've got that little drop and pop, I want you to then feel yourself drop and pop using each leg. So think of the legs as pistons, and all we're doing is we're just dropping from one to the other. There's a little drop in between, there's a drop, 
and a pop. The drop squashes the pressure down and the pop just extends, you just push off it, it just lifts you. So we've got a little bit of lateral. Now we need rotation. So as a right-hander, I'm gonna place this pressure dome under my front foot, under the forefoot, exactly on the place where I jumped from earlier, where I felt that push off. And I'm gonna place this pressure dome under my trail foot, under the heel. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create a rotational force through the ground. This is gonna help the ankles rotate, it's gonna help the hips rotate, it's gonna help you rotate your torso with so much more ease. You're not gonna to have to tension it like pulling up the band, this will eccentrically load just through momentum. And that's the key. Now we're gonna to create torque to help that rotation by pushing off the left foot, pushing off the right into the heel. So essentially there's a little bit of a squashing of those pressure domes and a little bit of a push off. You can already see how the body's rotating just by pushing off the forefoot of my lead foot. And I'm also pushing off the forefoot of my trail foot, but that's taking me into my rear foot. So I can actually feel myself pushing off the forefoot, which then squashes the ball under my heel. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna look up to the ceiling as we rotate. So I'm just looking up and notice what it's done to my shoulders. It's giving me side bend. Just looking up. Now, I don't wanna look up straight ahead here because a, it's hard work, <laughs> but B, I can't really rotate. So I'm gonna find the right place for me to make a nice turn, a nice easy rotation, and then look up. So I can feel myself, if you like, fully wound up, unweighted off the floor here. I can feel myself pushing off, assisting that rotation. I'm just gonna let myself look up to the ceiling behind me. And now I've got side bend. So it's a wind up, not a comical wind up. <laughs> and now you can start to feel the freedom of the motion of your arms. So the drop and pop exists in the backswing. How you can start this with the club, and this is what is right at the origin now of the start of the swing, is your forward press. Notice the players on TV, they've got this little shift. They've got this little, these little idiosyncratic movements where they just shift, kick the knee in, shuffle the hips, shuffle the pelvis, they do something, little forward press, they're creating that little counter move. They're just creating a little load to then push off and then sense the movement form that this exercise creates. Recognize the orientation now of where you are in terms of where the ball would be, in terms of where these body landmarks are. So think about pushing off, looking up to the ceiling, now look down at the ball, Notice the gap here between the chin and the shoulder. Notice it's under the chin. So just you having the intention of pushing off will give you the drop, the little mini drop. These are micro moves. They're moves within moves. A little drop gives us the pop. And then if you wanna do it with a club, swing up and now look up to the ceiling behind you. Pushing off the lead foot, right on the, off the forefoot, pushing off the forefoot of my trail foot into the heel, there's a push off. And at the same time, letting my body rotate, letting it pop and looking at the ceiling. And this creates the movement without looking. Without even thinking about dropping, you get it because you're trying to pop, you're trying to push. There's a little push. Now look down and you make the move without thinking. Have a little waggle, swing the club back and forth, and then when you feel the time's right, just push off those pressure domes. And then move those to one side and feel it without. And now without looking up. Now, from where the ball would be, so we've got a little precursor movement here, a little counter move, priming ourselves ready. So on the pressure plate, you're gonna see some activity. Look at the side to side movement, getting me ready. Look at the graph, there's pressure being applied. It's active, I'm not static, look at the graph now. 
If I stand like a statue, thinking about how I'm gripping, standing, taking away, look at this, I'm moving the club and there's no pressure. Look at that. There's nothing. The graph's hardly moving. Uh, the center of pressure between the feet's hardly moving. No real rotation. I'm not using the ground to my advantage. Whereas if I start to move, paddle the feet, have a little waggle, just little stomps of the feet, get myself ready, settle, move in. Now, when I decide the time's right, just settle and then push. And notice, suddenly, there's activation there. You've seen the graph. Loading, unloading. That unload enables me to transfer that force through the body, through to the club. And that is how we start the swing. So we set up lead foot to trail foot, trail foot to lead foot, pressure's moving, activity. There's a vertical force already, I'm pushing. I'm pushing off. And guess what? This vertical force doesn't just give you that natural momentum for sequencing, it's also stabilizing you. It helps keep things under control, and then we can go. It's not a bad graph, that one. Load, unload, but it's what happened before. See the little drop? That's the unload, that's the push off, and that's the backswing. <laughs>